Joe Biden continues to be senile. Yesterday, he was wandering around. Joe Biden, she was unable to lasso him properly. Joe Biden basically now acts as a cowgirl with with Joe Biden. He's a cow wandering around on the prairies, and she has to eventually kind of loop him and then uh, and then wrap the steer. Here, uh, here, here she is, but she uh, she fails in her job to to shepherd him to safety here. Just wanted to see it. There's a Joe and Jill one right beneath you. You see that? Is that yeah. what I'm Show that one. <laughs> yeah. And she walks off. Uh oh, you forgot Joe. You know to go. where is he going? Uh oh, he's looking at things. Never did this bit for me before when we were home. Oh my God, he can't even walk anymore. What? And then she, he says, do you want to get a picture in front? She's like, we already did. Oh my God, he's just, he's not even, he's not, even, oh my gosh. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so here is the problem. The media are now admitting that uh, they basically have known for a long time that he's senile and they decided to not cover it at all. So according to the puck, uh, Puck News, they said, for better, or, for better or worse, many in the White House press corps have spent the last couple of years noticeably avoiding the topic of the president's agility and acuity because it felt indelicate or irrelevant. Now the Her Report has stirred some soul searching. Now it has? So wh- why would you feel that that was relevant? By polls, Americans were concerned about Joe Biden's senility and his ability to do the job. Like the moment he was elected and many of them before, how would you just not report on that? And the answer, of course, is that they didn't want to report on it because they were too busy propping him up because this is what the media do. They massage him. Meanwhile, Karine Jean-Pierre, she of the White House press secretary job that she is terrible at, uh, she says that they have no update on when Joe Biden will receive a physical or what the results of that physical will be or when they will be released. Tomorrow marks one year since the president's last physical. So can you give us any type of sense of timing for when the next physical will be? It will happen. I don't have a timeline for you. It will happen. Hopefully. (laughs) <laughs> I don't have a timeline. It will happen. And like we have done in the last two years, it will be transparent. We will have a memo for all of you. I just don't have anything for you at this time. It will happen. No, no, they have nothing. They have no, no, nothing. No updates. Meanwhile, Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, she says Joe Biden's at the top of his game. Man, if he's at the top of his game right now, I would hate to see what the bottom of his game looks like. It called President Biden a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Do you agree with that? I absolutely disagree with that. I work very closely with President Biden, and I'm often with him on foreign trips. He's at the top of his game. The top of his game, says Janet Yellen. Of course, this is the same person who's out there saying that people are way better off than they were pre-pandemic. And the, the, the old Jedi mind trick here is not going to work. Are you and President Biden happy with where inflation is right now? Well, look, we know that Americans are experiencing um, discomfort because some important prices are um, higher than they were pre-pandemic. But what I think is really important is that wages have gone up along with prices. So people are better off um, than they were pre-pandemic. Oh, we're, we're all so much better off than we were pre-pandemic, except for the polls that show that no one actually thinks that at all. Plus, what we are looking at globally is an economic slowdown. So the CPI came in, again, higher than expected. So inflation still has not been quashed. The, the retail markets are starting to sink, which is why you saw the stock market actually bump a little bit yesterday because people realized that they couldn't put more money into bonds. Japan and the UK, according to Axios, each saw their economies shrink for two consecutive quarters, meeting the technical definition of a recession. According to data out on Thursday, meanwhile, in Europe, officials said they expect weaker economic growth all the way across the block. Europe and the UK are feeling the sting from the worldwide inflation shock and from decades high interest rates in response that have crimped demand. It's hard to imagine that the United States is going to somehow avoid the consequences of its own actions here. But other major economies are looking weaker than initially thought. So get ready. It'll be an interesting ride for Joe Biden economically. Speaking again, we had weaker than expected retail sales. That number came out just yesterday. So you had price increases, but weaker than expected retail sales. That sounds a lot like too much money chasing too few goods, which is the definition of inflation. Meanwhile, we do have an update on that shooting that happened at the Super Bowl celebration in Kansas City. According to officials, it stemmed from a dispute among several people and had, had, quote, no nexus to terrorism or homegrown violent extremism. They still have not actually released the identity of the people who were involved in the shooting. 
Apparently, according to the Kansas City Police Chief Stacey Graves, she said two of the three people detained are juveniles. None has been charged yet. Additional detentions or arrests are possible as well. Here was the Kansas City Police Chief explaining. I want to stress that preliminary investigative findings have shown there was no nexus to terrorism or homegrown violent extremism. This appeared to be a dispute between several people that ended in gunfire. Oh, so um, how does that sort of thing happen? The answer is not availability of guns. It's If they're minors, it's illegal for them to have control of weapons like that, presumably. So um, what happened? The answer is that Kansas City has been plagued by gangs. It's been plagued by violence. It's been plagued by fatherless households for a very, very long time. And so the crime continues to be really bad in places like Kansas City. Whether you have three minutes in the morning or 30 minutes with GenuCell, you can keep your face wrinkle free. I need it, which is why I use GenuCell. Not sure which product is great for you. A great place to start is their Gen 90. That's the new instant wrinkle treatment from GenuCell. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it, around the eyes, laugh lines, even the chin. It starts working in just seconds. You'll never worry about your skin or your confidence again. GenuCell's technology is luxurious, nourishing, and silk smooth. There's a reason GenuCell has 400% more customer loyalty than other skincare brands, and it just gets better. GenuCell's XV is a collagen builder moisturizer with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid in a pure natural base for stunning results day after day. Right now, Gen 90 and XV are included in their best-selling package on sale right now. Make those fine lines and wrinkles disappear wherever they are and before you even leave the room. Order right now at GenuCell.com slash Ben. My listeners will also get a free beauty box, a deep firming serum, and free shipping on all orders while supplies last. That's GenuCell.com slash Ben. Go check them out right now. The leading critic of Vladimir Putin has now been found dead in prison or has died in prison under unspecified circumstances. This is an actual important world event. Alexei Navalny is, was an anti-corruption campaigner who was widely seen as the chief rival to Vladimir Putin in Russia. Unclear how he died. He was merely 47 years old. He had been sentenced on a bunch of trumped up charges to a penal colony penalty of more than 30 years. So he had been behind bars since January of 2021, according to the Wall Street Journal, when he returned to Russia from Germany, where he was recovering after he'd fallen ill during a flight inside of Russia. So he uh, he got sick while he was on this flight inside of Russia. He then flew to Germany to seek treatment. And upon reaching Germany, doctors concluded that he had actually been poisoned with a Soviet-era nerve agent called Novichok, which is, again, one of the things that Vladimir Putin does. He tends to poison his critics. Navalny, for years, was a large-scale critic of Vladimir Putin up until his arrest. He came back from exile. He was immediately arrested by, by Vladimir Putin's team. And then he was sentenced. And then he was moved to an Arctic prison so remote that at first nobody knew where the hell he was. I mean, for, for literally weeks, they shuttled him around so that nobody could find out where he was. And then finally, he released a message saying that he was in a place that was extremely cold, far in the north, where all he could see were some dogs and some snow, basically. Here is footage of Navalny from yesterday in a court appearance. And as you can see, he looks alive and well. Now, he looks skinny, obviously, but this does not look like somebody who is on the verge of death, obviously. This is him literally yesterday. Uh, as the Wall Street Journal reports, Navalny's death practically extinguishes the last real political op opposition that still remained inside Russia following Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, his crackdown on free speech, and the passage of increasingly draconian laws aimed at stamping out any dissent. Navalny's time in jail reflected the worst excesses of a judicial and prison system that has increasingly been used to punish Putin's political opponents. He had suffered alarming health ailments in prison, issues that had worsened in recent months. His lawyers were basically cut off from all access on him. He was growing increasingly emaciated in video appearances in court. So, yeah, again, everyone suspects because people get suicided regularly. And, uh, and death by natural causes regularly if they are opponents of Vladimir Putin, that uh, the Putin regime finally had enough of Alexei Navalny and they felt the threat from the outside or from Navalny or from maybe the inside of Russia. And so it was just a convenient time to, uh, to get rid of Alexei Navalny. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 